Hi, I'm Nick Sider. I'm a field crop entomologist with the University of Illinois. Today we'll be talking about insect management following a rye cover crop. So cover crops are being adopted fairly widely in Illinois, um, primarily as a response to our nutrient loss reduction strategy, uh, as a strategy to reduce soil erosion and the nutrient losses that go along with that. We do have to take these into account when we're planning our insect management approaches. So cover crops aren't going to guarantee an insect problem by any stretch of the imagination. However, there are certain early season insect pests that can be favored by the inclusion of a rye cover crop. Now soybean after rye is the more commonly used system in Illinois currently. It's actually not a very high risk for pest infestations in Illinois. You occasionally get some issues with slugs. You occasionally get some issues with slugs in the same areas where you don't have a rye cover crop. Uh, so soybean we don't consider really high risk following rye. Where we are a little more likely to have some early season pest management problems is in corn, where the cash crop and the cover crop are somewhat closely related. What we occasionally see happen is that when you terminate that rye with a herbicide, whatever was feeding on that rye will then move over to the cash crop, again, typically corn. We have a few sort of common familiar culprits for this. Uh, one, the black cut worm, one of the most recognizable uh, common early season pests of corn in Illinois, also occasionally a pest of soybean, and their feeding will result in stunting of the plants and ultimately stand loss if it's severe enough. Probably the more common insect that we have following cereal rye is going to be the true army worm. Uh, this is an insect, the moths are very highly attracted to dense grassy vegetation, and a rye cover crop fits that bill. Now heavy feeding by true army worm in corn can stunt plants and reduce stand in severe cases. We see that feeding in soybeans, so if you have soybean following rye and there's army worms in there, you will see some feeding on the foliage. However, they don't digest that soybean foliage properly and the plants are going to very quickly recover from this. And so an insecticide for true armyworm in soybean is going to rarely, if ever, be justified. Now don't confuse that with the fall armyworm and the yellow striped armyworm, closely re related species that can damage soybean and in fact can damage it fairly severely in some cases. However, these two insects are rarely going to be present in Illinois early enough to threaten those seedlings. It's also important to point out that we can favor some beneficial insects with rye as well, particularly ground beetles. We'll also get some spiders out there, and these animals can help to suppress pests uh, by feeding on them. In terms of our management recommendations for rye in general, especially a head of corn, you might think about terminating that rye 10 to 14 days before planting. This is going to reduce the likelihood of those cutworms or armyworms moving over from the rye into the corn. Now this is less important in soybean, again, where we have less of a risk of, risk of insect damage. And your best defense against these pests is going to be to scout that early season corn, Use an insecticide on a rescue basis if you exceed the economic threshold. For cutworm, that's going to be 5% of the plants cut. For armyworm, that's going to be 25% of the plants with heavy damage. And in both cases, you do want to make sure that the larvae are still present. Uh, we want to avoid revenge applications that go out after those larvae have already been in there and done their thing. With that, thank you for watching, um, and you're welcome to email me any questions you may have.